Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Signscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called. Oh, it's it's. <laughs> I have the wrong title on my video. Uh, we're going to call this tree in a field. Okay, that's um, uh, not the most original title ever, but it will do. Yeah. Uh, tree in the field after the storm. How about that? Um, I this is being painted right now on some hardboard, which has been primed with two coats of transparent gesso. Um, and I do, uh, you know, someone was saying the other day how they like to color their boards. They like bits of that color coming through. Well, I I have lots of color coming through on my paintings, and it will typically be this brownish color. Uh, usually informed by the reddish underpainting on top of it. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, we are painting right now with uh, burnt umber, um, which is a good good color to do underpaintings with. In fact, I think I did this uh, the drawing um, slash underpainting portion of the of this painting about um, three or four days before jumping in and doing the full color. It might have been a, a whole week. Um, that's a great thing, though. You know, you can um, you can break things up. Um, you could definitely a good natural break is to do an underpainting and let that dry, and then do the rest of the painting. That's a great break. Um, for me, on the videos, the color doing a break in the middle uh, can be a problem because um, when I come back the next day, a lot of the especially the earth pigments would go very matte, um, whereas my wet paint is coming down. Um, somewhat shiny or not matte or shiny just regular paint looking so it's just something to keep in mind at least for me uh, it's better to do I uh, try and do my color pass initial color pass all in one go um, but if you if you get tired and you can't then you can't you know that's the thing it's a good to work uh, within the window where you have strength and presence of mind and can carry things through yeah um, so this uh, little tree, uh, we've painted it before, and we painted it um, many times before, actually. Uh, uh, I'd like to just pull it on a, uh, put it, or pull the reference up and, and, and get a board out and do a painting every now and again. It's been um, a good image for me, and um, uh, it's gotten to the point where I kind of measure myself against these things. You could look at how I painted this scene you know, 10 years ago, and 6 years ago, and 2 years ago, etc. I've done it in a variety of sizes, mostly 8x10 or 5x7. Um, not, um, haven't gotten much larger with it, but for something like a tree portrait, which is what I would consider this to be, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go too large, you know. If the larger I would go, I'd say the smaller I'd make the tree in the uh, in the scene. But this is not just a tree portrait. I mean, I'm calling it that because the tree is front and center, and um, obviously the subject. But a very interesting and colorful um, sort of stormy sky behind, um, which, uh, like I said, I painted many times. Uh, I've interpreted many times, and. Um, I like to think I'm getting smarter and better each time. So far, that's the way it's going. I mean, I'm I'm getting older, but um, so far, still getting better, which is awesome. You see a lot of people drop off as they. Uh, um, I'm not I'm not super aged, but you know, uh, we're getting into the uh, we're cracking on into the later 50s now. So, you know, I know I sound incredibly young, and I look I look very young too. I'm an old dude, you know. Anyway, uh, I'll, someone like Ines, he actually got, did his best work at the very end of his life. So that I hope that's me too. And it's great to have a progression. You know, it's great to get better. And, um, you know, over at a, a certain point in time, you're, you're going to get to a place where most everything you do is either good or great. If you keep working, if you keep practicing. Um, not if you keep watching videos, though. But don't stop watching just yet. Go ahead, finish this video, and then afterwards, um, turn off the computer, turn off the TV. Maybe you could have like an audio book or something going, but get your paints out, your easel out. In fact, you should have an area in your home that's always set up and ready to work, okay? 
It doesn't need to be a big space. I don't work in a huge space. I could work on a regular desk size space if I needed to, because I don't work tar terribly large. But always have your easel there. Have the boards ready to paint on there. Um, if you don't have your palette sitting in the fridge with paints on it, um, have your palette there and, and your paints handy and your brushes handy and your brush cleaner handy. Don't have any excuses or reasons why, oh, I need to get that out of the garage. Oh, I guess I'll get to that next week or something. No, have everything there and ready to go to when you finally decide to get, um, rouse yourself to do some actual work. Um, and then sit down and do a painting. Yeah. So what goes into that? Well, having boards prepped and ready, like that's if you're doing painting avoid avoidance uh, one day, that's one thing you could do is do a bunch of board prep. So you don't actually have to do painting. Maybe you don't have any quote unquote inspiration, which yeah, I'm not a big believer in, but we'll put that aside for now. Um, well, before I put it aside, I'll say inspiration shows up for people that are working. You know, people that wait for inspiration almost never get to work. So um, I do believe in inspiration, but it'll hit you while you're working, while you're you're sitting down ready to work. And one of the keys to that is having your, your easel set up, having a little spot in your home. Or, you know, maybe you have a whole area dedicated to your studio out in the garage or a shed in the backyard or what have you. It doesn't matter, but have it set up and ready. Um, have those boards prepped. Have a bunch of boards prepped, different sizes, and have a bunch of reference prep. Now, in the members area, which we have a version of this members area, I think it's about three hours long. It's live. Um, it has a complete color mixing session, which would be pretty interesting, given that some pretty cool colors in that sky and stuff. I'll talk you through all the uh, the mix the mixes there, and of course, it's real time. So as I'm painting, I'm I'm dropping information about, you know, the, the struggle, you know, and even when it's going well, there should be a, a bit of struggle, but, um, you want to have a, oh yeah, so this is what I was going to say, in the members area, I just put up a video uh, a few days ago of me doing my, um, preparation of a photo I took uh, last Sunday, um, in preparation to do a painting, so, I like to take the photos for a little ride in Photoshop. You could use any of uh, the editing programs. You could even use something like the uh, the Instagram filters. It really doesn't matter. You just uh, start start messing around with that photo, getting some inspiration going there. You know, it doesn't need to be a good looking photo. It just needs to be something that sparks your imagination and, and gets you um, you know, interested in making a scene or finishing a scene, but have those reference images prepped either in your computer, or on your phone, or if you're doing printouts, I did printouts for years. A um, bunch printed out, have that in that little area. You got reference ready, you got paintings ready, you got your paints, you got your brushes, you got your brush cleaner, uh, you got your medium, you have a little uh, uh, palette uh, for doing your painting, and then um, you see, now, if you'd had something like that set up, uh, uh, you know, when I was telling you that to, to turn off this video and get to work, you could do just that. Turn off the video, go over to your painting area, put a board on the easel, pick a bit of reference that you have primed and to, to get ready. Oh, and by the way, some of those reference images could be a study after a master or something like that, right? Um, have all that ready and then sit down, do painting, spend an hour and a half. A little painting like a 5 by 7 you could probably get it mostly done in an hour and a half. And then what you would have uh, is a feeling of accomplishment. And you go, well, yeah, but all I've been doing is bad paintings lately, man. And it's really bumming me out. It's like, well, that's okay. Here's the solution to that. Do the bad painting. If you really can't stand looking at it, don't, don't throw it away yet, maybe. But just turn it away so you don't have to look at it. Turn it facing towards the wall or the easel or what have you. And um, tomorrow, do the same thing. Just don't even look at that bad painting. Put it aside. Grab a board. Grab some reference and do it again. And it's probably not going to be as bad. Or what I might recommend, <clears throat> if there's some things you know that you do well, that you have some, you know, develop some mastery, like maybe you're good at lake scenes or maybe you're good at tree portraits like we're doing today here. Or it doesn't even matter what. But if you've done a bad painting, the next day would be a good day to do something that you know you're strong. Maybe a little master study, but something to uh, just keep yourself moving, you know, and just for the sake of argument, let's say that's bad. Well, then 
don't worry about that. Do the same thing. Just put it aside and do another pain the next day. And I guarantee you, if you do this, you'll you, not every day will be bad. You'll start having days that are good. Um, now, these bad paintings, you can, a couple things might be bad because um, you were following the reference too closely and the reference had some real compositional issues that weren't obvious to you until you turned it into a painting. Well, there you could just have a day where you just go in and fix it without looking at the reference at all. You know, what do you have to lose? It's a painting that's already bad. You know, maybe you can fix it. That's one. Uh, two, if it's a, not redeemable that way, um, wait till it's dry, scrape it down with a palette knife, and then cover it, say, with uh, a, a sort of a pale uh, brown color, or whatever color you like to, to work with, and that would be oil paint. Let that dry, and then you have a surface you can do a new painting right on top of. <clears throat> and then the third option, if it's really, really incredibly bad, and it's really upsetting you or how much of it it's offended your your own work has offended your 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 sense of aesthetics uh, so greatly take it out on the curb and smash it and then throw it away okay don't keep it around and this will be really easy to do by the way if you if you're doing some painting every day who cares if you do a bad one it don't matter because you'll be stacking up good you'll be stacking up some bad hopefully getting rid of the bad like with my advice there. Um, you got some that are middling. They got a few that are good. The middling you can put aside. Maybe you can fix them. Maybe you can make them better at some point. Maybe you ruin them some more and then cover them up and do the painting over the top of them or take them out to the curb and smash them. Uh, but keep those good ones around. Keep the ones that where you can see your progress. Give yourself that positive stimulation, that positive feedback, the attaboy, you know. Uh, we can see this is the next day on this painting and you can see how the colors on that tree all went very matte um, now I will be putting this in the store but I'm doing some photography tonight so um, I won't actually be putting this up tonight I'll be putting it up tomorrow and with with that really nice photo of the uh, pardon me you know where the tree doesn't have those matte bits on it yeah I try, you know, you got a window, and that's it, you know, I've got a window of painting, it's about two and a half to three hours long, depending, that would include the color mixing and stuff, depending on the uh, the reference, depending on the size, depending on a lot of factors, um, I can't paint uh, straight for eight hours, maybe I could, you know, it all depends uh, on the circumstances, but generally speaking, I get my uh, two to three hours a day and on the days I, I paint, which today is not one, it's Sunday. So I just got back from church and I'm doing a video for you, Sunday the 23rd. Yeah, so hopefully you enjoyed me uh, watching me do this and you got some um, some idea from it. It's a nice little tree painting. I've done this uh, scene before. You can find it on the channel, no doubt. Don't know what I called it and I won't be doing that digging for you, but you could find it. You could definitely find it. Anyway, until I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid. Get to work, do some paintings, quit watching videos. Until I come back with another video, um, in which case uh, I want you to, uh, until that time, take good care of yourself, your family, your loved ones. Try and love uh, your enemies. Be, uh, be impatient with, uh, be patient when people have opinions that differ from your own. You don't know everything. I don't know everything, and um, things are always changing and shifting. So, anyway, until I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid, take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones, stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.